I haven't talked about Rivian on this channel yet, but now is the perfect time to start because they're a great company with great aspirations. But not only that, they've made some pretty big moves the last couple of days and the earnings are right around the corner. Hey guys, Corey here. Welcome to the channel. If it's your first time stopping in and you like the content, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell so you know when I post new videos. Also, if you're feeling generous, you can give me a thumbs up as it greatly helps the channel. I also have my new newsletter, free newsletter to join right now in the info box below with tips, strategies, and weekly updates on how to get better as a trader and an investor. You guys can sign up for that free newsletter below in the information box and the link is right there on the screen. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel anytime right below this video. There's a little heart there and you can sign up to become an exclusive member of Invest with Corey. And I appreciate all the support. I love you guys. You're the best. So let's dive right into Rivian. It is another EV manufacturer based in the United States. However, it's different than Lordstown Motors or Fisker Motors who are both bankrupt. Well, Fisker's not bankrupt yet, but it's ultimately looking like it's inevitable and the demise is imminent. However, Rivian is an automotive manufacturer that, although not profitable, is doing much better than Fisker or Lordstown Motors. In fact, Rivian is on the cusp of being profitable this year with their upcoming R2 vehicles, which are going to be much more affordable. Rivian just announced their new COO is Javier Varela, who was the COO of Volvo Motors. He's going to be joining Rivian in August. He's going to oversee manufacturing, logistics, and quality, and he'll report directly to the CEO. Not only did Javier Javier worked for Volvo as the COO. He also worked for PSA, which is now known as Stellantis, in 1990 is when he started there. He has over 35 years experience in the automotive world. Varela expressed his commitment to help Rivian scale and innovate as it prepares to roll out and launch its upcoming vehicles, including the R2. More big news for Rivian is the state of Illinois gave them a grant for $827 million. It's part of an incentive package to expand Rivian's operations. This is for the facility in Illinois where Rivian is going to be producing the new R2 vehicle. It's also an incentive to enhance factory and public infrastructure. This $827 million dollar grant and incentive is also for Rivian's training and workforce. Rivian will also be involved in several city improvement projects as well. This is all part of Rivian's pledge to invest in the Illinois economy and community. Between Javier Varela as the new COO and the incentive grant from the state of Illinois, this is exactly what Rivian needs for the launch of the R2 this summer. It's everything we could have hoped for, showing a much better path and a quicker path to profitability with more experience and more capital to use in order to get there. I just want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I'm just here to coach you guys on strategies, fundamentals, technicals, financials, and a general overall guideline on the market sentiment. It's ultimately up to you to decide which stocks you want to get into and what size of a position you would like to enter into that stock as it's your money. The EV sector has been taking a beating lately, a pretty big beating. Fisker is almost bankrupt. Lordstown Motors is bankrupt. Rivian's been suffering. Even Tesla's been suffering. Neo is down. Now they're back up again. Overall, the sector sentiment was rough, but now it's rebounding and recovering. But let's face it, EV demand might be down right now, but it's eventually going to work its way back up as EVs are the future. Hybrids are much more expensive to own and maintain than an electric vehicle. So at the end of the day, EVs are the future, even though we're in a rough time right now. In the United States, we have Tesla, Lucid, and Rivian. We already know Tesla is very successful. Now, between Rivian and Lucid, I believe that Rivian is is the better EV company. They have better management skills, better money management. And with this $827 million incentive grant from the state of Illinois, that puts them way above Lucid in my opinion. And now they've got the COO with the experience in order to bring Rivian into profitability and higher sales margins. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph on Rivian, the technical 
skills, the fundamentals, and then how we could potentially get into Rivian. Because right now, I already have a pretty decent position in my large portfolio. And in my small portfolio, I have a very small position and I have puts for sale on Rivian as well as calls. I remember last year when Rivian was really high, it spiked in the $25 range. So I don't count anything here that happened in 2021 or 2022. That was all inflation and overly bought and overly sold and everything was just up and down all over the place. I don't really consider the market recovering, you know, until at least January, 2023. 2023 into 2024, market recovering, somewhat normal. Things go back to a little bit of normality if there is such a thing. And if we look at Rivian, we'll see that it kind of bounced off of the $15 mark, came up to 21, and then it came back down and found a new home around $12, a little bit above where it's at right now. But then it gapped up like crazy back last July and it was up around $27. Then it came back down, settled in at 20 and 23 for a while, dipped to 15, back to 24 in December. And then now it's come down and settled at 15 and a bad earnings has sent it plunging into the $10 mark. With the news of the new COO, as well as the incentive grant package, all they really need is to meet or beat the earnings estimate this time around. And Rivian's going to end up up here somewhere fighting the daily gap in the $14 range. It's going to be very tough to break this gap from the last earnings. But if this earnings is good and they meet or beat the estimate, pair that with the news of the new COO of Javier Varela, as well as the incentive grant from Illinois, that's going to push this stock. I anticipate on earnings, we are going to probably end up somewhere in the 11 to $13 range, and it might even push up to 13 or 14. Then it'll settle back down. I think we're going to settle in between 1250 and 1350, but it could be a little lower. It's going to depend on the earnings. If the earnings are good, there might be a little bit of a sell-off Monday. I think it'll jump up. And then I think earnings, it'll come up and come back down and we'll settle here if we meet or beat the earnings. Somewhere between 1250 and 1350. If the earnings are a miss, I mean, anything's possible. It could still go up because of the good news. In fact, because of the COO, Javier being brought on and the incentive package, even if they miss this earnings, people are probably going to be passive about it and just accept it as, okay, well, that happened, but this summer things are going to get better because of the good news. So even if they don't beat the earnings, I still feel like Rivian's going to settle in the $11 range. They're going to be somewhere in the $11 range, or if it's really good, they're going to be up around 12 to 13. And either way, in the coming weeks going into the next earnings, it's going to be trekking somewhere between 12 and 14. On the next earnings call, and when we get closer to July and August, for the launch, in my opinion, if that earnings is good or better than this one, and they're beating both estimates this week and in a couple of months, and if they're in line to produce the R2 on time with the deliveries that they anticipate, I could see us breaking back up in the $16 to $17 range somewhere this summer. So in my opinion, at $10, Rivian's an absolute steal. Rivian is better than Lucid, in my opinion. They're way better than Fisker. Lordstown's gone. In fact, the only American EV company that is any competition to Rivian is Tesla. I think Rivian produces a great vehicle. They have pretty good management. They now have the COO to get them into profitability and keep things done in a timely fashion and keep things organized. But they also have the state of Illinois backing them up with the almost $1 billion incentive package, which is a grant. Ultimately, I expect Rivian to make this path right here. This is where I expect Rivian to go. I don't see it being a stretch that by this summer, Rivian's back up in the $18 range. Meaning if you get in now, you could possibly get a 50 to 100% return by summer, not including the covered calls, which I will explain in this video how to do. First, let's take a look at the financials of Rivian. Total revenue in quarter two, 2022, 364 million, all the way up to 1.32 billion. Great, very great growth. Gross profit, negative 738 million. Yikes, down to negative 681 million. So an improvement, but still worse than two quarters prior. Operating income, negative 1.71 billion. Now now they're up to negative 1.58 billion. So their operating income is still rough. Pre-tax income, negative 171. Now they're up to 152. So they're definitely headed in the right direction. Net income, negative 171, 1.71 billion to negative 1.52 billion. Again, going in the right direction, not where we 
where we want to be, but in the right direction. EBITDA, negative 1.55 billion. Again, negative 1.31 billion now. Headed in the right direction, but not anywhere close where we want to be just yet. Let's take a look at cash flow. So we're looking at cash flow from operation activities, negative 1.2 billion up to 1.1 billion, a slight improvement. Investing activities, negative 359 million. Now they're at negative 603 million. Cash from financing activities, 57 million in profit. Now they're up to 1.62 billion in profit. Free cash flow is about the same, negative 1.56. Now they're at negative 1.41. So they're not making any money from their operational activities. Their investing activities, they're not making any profit from either, but they're purchasing investments and they have capital expenditures. So they're expanding. That's good. So this is the issuance of long-term debt like security notes, bonds, and stuff like that, preferred shares. So they've made money from that, but they're still negative. With the new grant incentive, 827 million, that covers half of this. So they're only about 600 million away from breaking even. So with good R2 sales and over the next two quarters, they're going to be able to become profitable. Rivian is looking good. The technicals show a buy, the analyst ratings a buy, and when your price target is 15, my one year price target is 18, 18 to 20, but we'll see what happens. Either way, I'm in line with them that this price is a buy at $10 either way. So let me show you how you can get into Rivian. We have three options. Let's take a look at what those three options are. So with earnings this week, you can go ahead, click on sell, click on put. I would recommend selling a $10 put. I don't see Rivian going below $10. It could drop to $9. It could, or even $8.50, but it's hard to say, but I don't think that's going to happen. But if you sell a $10 put for $79, your break-even price is $9.21. So even if Rivian drops to $8.50 or $9, you're really only going to be out $20, maybe $70. Not too bad because you're collecting almost $80 juicy premium. If Rivian stays above $10, which I expect them to do, you're getting $79 free money. The only problem with this is you're going to be richer if Rivian stays above $10 as you get to keep the juicy premium. However, you don't get the shares. And if Rivian goes up to $13 or $14, you miss the entry. So if you sell this $10 put and Rivian goes up to $14, I would immediately on Tuesday roll out and up to the next strike price of maybe $11 or $12 to collect more juicy premium. Let me show you an example on a put that I already have on Rivian. So this is one put that I have on Rivian currently. Let's say Rivian goes all the way up to like $14. That's good because this is worthless and I keep my $93. Amazing premium, juicy and amazing premium. It's all mine to keep. However, I'm not in the stock, which I already have lots of Rivian in my big portfolio. I have 5,000 shares in that portfolio and I have more shares over here. However, I want more. If this happens, I'm $93 richer of this beautiful juicy premium, but now I miss my entry. But let me show you how you can fix this. What we're gonna do, if Rivian looks like they're gonna stay above 10 or $11 or more, I'm rolling out and up to get assigned because I wanna get in, especially because it's now the bottom or it could very well be the bottom. And that's how you find the bottom with puts. You sell at the bottom. If you don't get assigned and the price looks like it's gonna stay above your strike price, you roll out and up to the next strike price to collect more premium and to get in. This is my strategy and my my system and it works very well once you're at the bottom if you miss the entry you just keep rolling your put out and up and then when the stock pulls back a little bit you get assigned and then you may not have made it in at the bottom but you've collected all that juicy premium to help offset so what i will do is if rivian ends up at 14 dollars, if i roll up because the same week if i roll up to say 13 i'm going to end up collecting 268 dollars premium and, get, and then i'm going to get assigned hopefully and if not it's my premium for the taking because i don't I don't care if I get assigned. It's all this extra premium that I want. So you see how I can roll out and up for more premium. So I have a $9 put. And what I suggest you guys doing is what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch Rivian. If it looks like on the day of earnings before the market closes around 3.30, 3.45 p.m., if I notice that Rivian is above $10.50 or closer to $11 and it's got good momentum, I'm going to roll out and up to $10, $10.50 or $11, depending on where the strike is. Because if I roll out and up to $10, I'm going to collect $43 more juicy premium. And the reason I'm going to do this is because if it's above $10.50 or above $11, even if the earnings are right at the expectation or slightly below, odds are Rivian will fall to $10 or $9.50. It's probably not going back to $9, honestly, which means I won't get assigned here, but I can collect more premium at the $10 mark or $11 and get assigned. If it looks to me like Rivian's going to close the day at, say, $11 or even $11.50, I 
I will roll to an $11 premium because odds are Rivian's going to go up and I think they're going to meet the expectation. If they at least meet it, then we're probably not going below $10. So I will go up to $149. There's a chance I'll do that and I will collect $112 juicy premium. And if I get assigned at 11, that extra $112 means I'm really only paying $9.88. And my original put was for $9. So in this situation, worst case, I'm losing $88. I'll just sell a covered call the following week or two and make it right back. So if we're going to sell a call, we're obviously going to sell it, say, $14 or $15 if Rivian's at $13. So realistically, the price right now is at $10. So we want to get an estimate, which means we'd want to see what a $12 call would be worth right about now, which is $25 a week. So if this happens and I get assigned at $10 or $11 and the price goes up to 13, comes back down to 10, and I'm like, oh, I got assigned at 11 instead of nine, even though I collected 112 juicy premium, basically $9.88, but I could have kept the $9 put at $9, meaning I'm out $88. Not a big deal because I can make about $25 a week selling covered calls. So if I sell four weeks of covered calls, there's $100. So in three weeks to a month, I make that back. So no matter what, I'm not going to lose any money. That's how I handle this situation. Okay, so let's say you sell this $11 put for $112 and then you get assigned at $11. So $11 minus, which would be $1,100 minus $112 is $988. If Rivian goes to say even $8.75, which is $875. Let's just say they go to $875. You're now out $113. You're out $113. However, you can make $25 a week selling covered calls. So 25 times, let's just say six weeks, $150. In a month and a half, you're up 150, 150, take away 113. This is going to leave you guys with a $37 profit. So now after six weeks, you own the shares and you're up $37 and you keep selling covered calls. This right here is how you mitigate the loss. If that was to happen, if you sell the put of $11 and Rivian after earnings stays at say 114, then you roll the put to 113, which is $13 for the end of the week so that you can potentially get a sign. If you do that, you're probably going to collect another 50 to $80. And if you don't get assigned, you're up $112 plus, let's say, $60. Worst case scenario, you made $172 and you didn't get assigned. Now you can buy the stock. So you sell the $11 put for $112. Rivian goes to $14 on earnings. So now Wednesday and Thursday, you're thinking, oh my God, I'm not going to get assigned. You roll out and up to $13, make another $60 premium at least, probably more, but we'll say $60. You're at $172 profit for the week. If you don't get assigned on Friday, it's okay. Okay, you're $172 richer. Now you can buy the shares. We can go ahead and buy the shares. So you buy Rivian, let's say they're at $14 next week, $1,400 for 100 shares. And you buy them for $1,400 minus the 172 you collect. So it's not costing you $1,400. It's actually costing you $1,228. So your break even is $1,228. So worst case, either way you're winning. If it goes up and you don't get assigned, all the premium from the puts add up, you're getting in cheaper. If the price goes below the put that you're selling, then you gotta sell covered calls. In six weeks, you're still up. Leveraging the power of options, you can't lose if you do it the right way. Either way, you cannot lose selling Rivian puts and then selling calls against the stock that you currently own. Sell puts to get in, then sell the calls to generate more premium. If the puts don't get you assigned, you then use the premium from the puts to buy the stock, and then you continue on selling the calls right here. Either way, you can't go wrong. Rivian is looking to turn the page and close the previous chapter of its journey into financial profitability by bringing aboard the new COO, Javier Varela, and not only that, getting an $827 million grant incentive package from the state of Illinois, 
has really shown over the last few days that Rivian can rebound from this downward trend that it's gotten itself into with its previous earnings being a complete miss. However, with the upcoming earnings, all they really have to do is meet the expectation. Anything better than that is just going to send Rivian all the way up because they are making all the right decisions. They are releasing the new R2. So this way there's a more affordable lineup in Rivian's production. They are able to step up and ramp up production because of the grant incentive package for their new facility expansion and infrastructure. And not only that, with the experience that Javier brings, they are going to be able to implement that experience with that grant and incentive to get these R2s on the streets and delivered to customers, meaning this upcoming earnings and the next two quarters after it are extremely important. So I guess what I'm really saying is that Rivian intends to not only expand the business and become profitable and deliver new vehicles, they expect to become a serious competitor to Tesla in the United States. And if you're asking me if it's a good buy on Rivian right now, it's the perfect time to buy. Because currently, I believe that Rivian's stock price is at the bottom. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell so you know when I post new videos. Also, you can become an exclusive member of Invest with Corey right below this video. You can click on the heart to support the channel and become an exclusive member at any time. You can also sign up for my free newsletter and get weekly tips and fundamentals and all kinds of free information to help you become a better trader and investor. You can sign up for free at any time below this video on the information box. Be sure to sign up now. This way you guys can get all my updates weekly. And remember guys, until the next upload, let's grow our wealth together. Take care guys.